Hi there. In this video I'll be answering a question about projectiles. This one is from the CFE Higher Specimen paper. A golf ball is hit with a velocity of 50 meters per second at an angle of 35 degrees to the horizontal as shown. E part 1 then asks us to calculate the horizontal component of the initial velocity of the ball and part 2 asks us to calculate the vertical component of the initial velocity of the ball. If you're not sure how to do this, then it helps to draw a sketch. A right angle triangle with the angle to the horizontal marked as well as the velocity of the object. This is the hypotenuse in a right angle triangle. To find the horizontal component, that's the adjacent side in a triangle, we use this equation. The cosine function is used because it links the adjacent, what we're trying to find out, with the hypotenuse, the velocity at an angle that we've been given. Substituting our values into the equation, we get 50 cos 35, which equals 41 metres per second. The vertical component, which is what we're trying to find in A part 2, is the opposite side in our triangle. So we use the sine function. VV is equal to V sine theta, which equals 50 sine 35 equals 29 metres per second. Part B says, the diagram shows the trajectory of the ball when air resistance is negligible and we are asked to show that the horizontal distance travelled by the ball is 240 metres. We've already worked out the horizontal component of the ball's velocity, so to find its horizontal distance, we need to calculate the time the ball is in the air. We'll calculate the time taken for the ball to reach maximum height, then multiply by two, since the ball's path is symmetrical. So using this equation, we know that the ball's initial vertical velocity is 29 metres per second, at a maximum height, its vertical velocity is zero. We also need to decide which direction we're going to take as positive. I'll be taking upward as positive here, which means that our value of A, acceleration due to gravity, will be negative 9.8 ms to the minus two. Substituting into our equation, we get this. Zero is equal to 29 plus negative 9.8 times t. If I add 9.8 t to both sides, I get this. 9.8t is equal to 29. Dividing both sides by 9.8 gives me a time of 29 divided by 9.8, which equals 2.96 seconds. Remember, this is the time to maximum height. So the total time of flight is 2.96 multiplied by 2 is equal to 5.92 seconds. To find the horizontal distance, or range, we use the equation d is equal to vt. But this time, V is the horizontal component of velocity, 41 metres per second. This gives a value of 242.72 metres, which, when we write it to an appropriate number of significant figures, is 240 metres. The value of A we've used, 9.8 ms to the minus 2, which is found in the data sheets, is written to two significant figures. So that's why our final answer is also written to two significant figures. Remember, the projectile's horizontal velocity is constant, unlike the vertical component. And in this case, we were able to work out the time of flight by finding the time to maximum height and then multiplying by two. This isn't always possible. In this example, we would find the time to maximum height as before, using our initial vertical velocity and the vertical velocity at maximum height, zero meters per second. We then need to find the time for the ball to drop from its maximum height to the ground. We'd have to take this value of s as negative since it's falling downwards and we're taking upwards as positive. The time for the ball to drop to the ground could be found from this equation. s is equal to ut plus half a t squared where u would be taken as zero since that's the initial vertical velocity as it drops to the ground from maximum height. Once we add the two times together we can find the ball's range as before. That's us for now. Look out for my other projectors video where I go into a little bit more depth. And remember to keep practicing this style of question. For more information on upcoming videos, summary sheets and so on, visit physics-podcast.co.uk. Thank you for listening.